Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to be taking you through um, garbage collection in Python. Um, yeah, I've already been introduced. <laughs> I'm a DevOps engineer with our folks. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers of this event and uh, welcome all of you to this um, yet another talk. And I hope you'll enjoy it and uh, get something new out of it. So this is not going to be so technical. It's just going to be talking about, uh, I don't know what technical is, but I think um, you're going to get quite some insight out of it. So let's get right into it. So like um, I was introduced, I'm Elijah Okello, I'm a software engineering student at Makere University in Uganda, and I'm a DevOps engineer. Um, so let's get right into it. So um, before we jump right into this, uh, we, I think the term garbage collection could be new to some people, and um, I think it's important to just you know demystify the concept. Well, garbage is anything that is unwanted, um, and in the terms of computer science, garbage uh, is anything in memory or objects in memory that are not being used by the process that is currently executing on the heap. Now, when I say process, it's really just a program that is executing the computer. And when programs are executing, um, they have objects that they create in order to be able to, you know, perform certain computations and, um, you know, basically go about their tasks. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of a brief a background. Uh, originally, in old languages, uh, that is uh, the likes of C and C++, there was manual me memory management, right? Now, manual memory management meant that if you, you know, create objects uh, in memory and you, um, you know, basically you're assigning them references or like pointers in, in the program, you are giving them references, you're creating variables, you're creating arrays, whatever kind of data structure that you're creating, usually in, in memory, the operating system allocates uh, certain spaces within the, the RAM and uh, places the object that you have created there. And then it it um, assigns it a reference, really. That's basically it. Now, um, when you do that, uh, when you do that, the, the the reference can be accessed within the program. And whenever you access the reference, you are actually accessing the object memory. Now, uh, programmers originally had to do manual memory management in that when you assign an object a reference. Later on, when you no longer need that object, you have to remove it from memory. Basically, you have to collect the garbage, like your, um, like the illustration in the picture here. You you um, have um, um, you have a you know some things in the fridge. You've used them; they're done, and they're empty, empty bottles or empty whatever cans. Uh, so you have to like you know take them out and put them in the trash can. Generally, you just have to collect the garbage. Now there are there are certain um, disadvantages with this kind of um, set up because you may accidentally take out what you didn't intend to throw away so you maybe see a certain tin and you think it has some um you think it doesn't have any content in it so you throw it away but yet there was something that you, it was something that you needed so in this case um the same in computer science that sometimes the programmers accidentally deleted data that they required and so it was it's just really a, a hassle to to do memory management as well as try to meet the functional requirements of the application that you're trying to build. Now, um, this is where the advent of automatic memory management came in. And modern languages like Python, um, there are quite a number, but today's the subject of Python. So modern languages like Python have uh, what we call automatic memory management. And this kind of memory management, the load of managing memory and uh, doing all that sort of, you know, Allocating memory in the, in the RAM and you know uh, getting it out from the from from the RAM, you know, freeing up and all those things, it is abstracted away from the programmer. And all the programmer has to think about is build the solution or build the, the software, construct the algorithm, you know, just come up with something that is um, that meets the requirements of the user, so to say. And the runtime or the the, the language uh, interpreter does the work of managing memory. Now, automatic memory management comes with its demerits or, dis or disadvantages. 
So the disadvantages, uh, there is uh, additional memory usage uh, because first of all, you're running an entire um, program. I think you should know that, I think it's, it's important to point out that um, a GC or garbage collector uh, running in the heap is actually a, um, it's a, it's a program in itself. So it uses memory and it also uses uh, a CPU. So it has to be executed. So there's additional computation and additional memory usage, right? Now these two things, of course, sometimes cause problems, um, especially if you're, you, you, you have certain issues with maybe uh, resources that are available to you for execution. That's why the, the automatic memory management can be a disadvantage. But when, when we look at Moore's law, um, uh, Moore's law states that I think I hope you can see that uh, Moore's law is the observation that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles about every two years. So, with that law, I think we can all attest to it that um, or almost every two years, you know, that the, the hardware capabilities of the computers that are released just keep on increasing. It just keeps on increasing, right? So it reaches a point where um, the disadvantages of the um, garbage collector, right? The disadvantages of the garbage collector begin to seem like they are not there. I am. Um, I have been writing Python for quite some time now, and I don't think uh, in all the programs I have built, um, I don't think I have ever found a problem with the garbage collector. Now, of course, there are certain companies that have found problems with the garbage collector, and uh, a lot of research is going around that on how uh, to better, um, you know, see how to work with the garbage collector. Some, we're going to see ahead in, in, in this talk that some companies, uh, you know, be, begin to do, so, go, go, do outrageous things with, with the garbage collector, like turning it off or, you know, tweaking it here and there because it um, takes a toll on the memory usage and also the computation, right? So you're using CPU as well. Um, now the advantages out with out with the disadvantages. The advantages of garbage collection are so many. Uh, there are very many uh, new programmers who never even get to, you know, know about garbage collection because garbage collection is it's something they never have to deal with. The languages they work with are like the likes of Python, Ruby, Java, and these ones have automatic memory management. So the user, rather the programmer, never has to really de get to know about uh, what is happening under the hood. By and large, it's 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 not really imperative that um, when you're programming, you should tinker around with uh, with a garbage collector because uh, these these these, these softwares, uh, these algorithms are fine tuned so well uh, by a very huge uh, group of researchers and uh, software engineers. So they are built to provide optimum results. So today, uh, being a Python talk, we're going to be looking at C Python. Now, um, C Python is uh, the reference implementation of the Python programming language. Uh, it's implemented in C and Python, and it is the most widely used implementation of the Python programming language. Um, to check out which Python implementation you are running, you can just run this command at your terminal and um, uh, um, and see which uh, Python you're running. So I'm just going to run it here real quick, and then you can see. I hope you can see that. So I'm already inside a Python repo inside here. I'm going to import platform. I'm going to import platform. And then I say platform. Print it out. Platform the Python implementation implementation um so that should print out cpython because i'm running cpython and later on in the in, in, in the talk we're going to see how the same can be done for pypy uh, but for now let's look at python cpython now cpython um does garbage collection using two specific algorithms uh, there is reference counting and the generation of garbage collection. Now, uh, reference counting uh, is very simple. So when the um, program is executing, when a Python program is executing, right, the runtime keeps track of all references to an object in memory. Now, 
um, when you create a variable, when you create a variable instant, when you instantiate a variable in a script, um, and you assign and you assign that variable a value, uh, say it's a string or an integer, um, or it's a list, uh, whatever it is. There are many data structures in Python. So you assign the variable a value. Now that value is going to be stored in memory, somewhere in memory. It's going to be allocated a uh, space in memory, and it's going to have a reference, right? It's going to have a reference that is pointing, um, that is connecting it to that variable. Now, when you read the variable, this is what happens at runtime. When you read the variable, let me say you print A, right? Uh, when you print, um, let me just show you here for, for this part. So if I, I say A is equal to one, right? Um, so A is a variable that has been instantiated and one has been created in my Python heap. So when I print A like this, okay, I'm passing in a reference uh, called A, right? So what the runtime is going to do, it's going to go to a memory location uh, that, that has a reference of A and pick the value that is there and print it uh, on the standard output because I say print. So it's one that is printed out. Now, um, what does reference counting do? Reference counting um, looks at the number of references on an object in memory. So uh, like, like I had showed you, when I said A is equal to one, um, one receive one reference like this. So whenever you um, create a variable and you give it a uh, value, the reference count of the object increases to one. Then also, the um, whenever you pass that variable into, uh, whenever you pass the, the variable that's pointing to that object into a function like, like I passed it into print, it printed one, so it got another reference to it. So whenever you, um, you know, pass the variable into um, a, a, a function, really a function call, it, its reference count increases. I hope you know that. So in this illustration, I think you can see that we have um, this object, this huge object over here, RC is equal to three, because there are three pointers that are pointing to it, like there are three references to it, right? And this one has no reference, and that's why its reference count is zero. And therefore, as we see, um, this is going to be collected. Now, um, ref how does uh, how does uh, reference counting work exactly? So what 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 the runtime does? It, as, like I said, it keeps track of all the references to an object in memory. Now, when it Whenever um, it an object's references drop to zero, uh, when ne and and the, the, the garbage collector does a sweep through the heap, every object that has a reference count of zero is collected. I I don't know whether that makes sense, but every object that has a a reference count of zero, it's removed from the heap. Like generally, um, get 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 it's it's gotten out of the, the Python execution heap. That's basically what happens. So. In essence, whenever an object, you can think of it like this, whenever an object's reference count is to, down to zero, it means it is no longer going to be used. Actually, if an object's reference count is zero, it means it can't be accessed within the Python executing program. Like you can't access it within the program, right? So you can't really, um, you can't do anything about it. So it's, 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 it's in memory. So since you can't use it in the program, it must be removed. So it's considered garbage, essentially. That's where garbage collection comes from. So let's go to the next slide. So um, this is just a very simple snippet of how you can uh, interact um, with, um, with, with, with um, uh, interact with like the, the reference counter. Not really interacting with the reference counter, but like it's more of like an illustration of, of how the reference counting works, right? So um, I'm going to just pop back into the, the terminal and, and, and show you something. So just back here, I'm going to import sys, right? Import sys, there's a module in the standard library, right, import sys. So I'm going to import sys. Now I'm going to um, run a method, uh, this method here, uh, get ref count. Now that's a method in the sys um, module that helps us to, to, to show the number of ref, of of references on an object. So I instantiated a variable up here called a. I'm going to say sys dot get ref count. So to get the ref count of a, uh, I'm going to press enter. Um, 
it has uh, 260. Um, so this is the current number of references that are on this variable called A, right? It has 260 um, references on it. Um, so let's come back here. Now it has 260 references. Now for the, in this case here, this is, this is what I had run earlier on, and I just put it here for purposes of demonstration. This um, A is equal to my string uh, is one reference, then this um, is another reference. So whenever I pass it to a function, it gets another reference, and hence we have two references. Um, we put A in a list as well and put it in a dictionary. Um, so when you count the number of references, there's one, two, three, four. So whenever you put it also in a data structure, that's another reference, and therefore we have a reference count of five. So whenever a reference count of an object goes to zero, it's collected um, by the by the GC, the garbage collector. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Now, um, we have looked at reference counting, right? Um, and um, reference counting is sufficient when we have uh, objects whose reference counts go to zero. But um, so sometimes, for some random reasons, um, the Objects in memory can have reference cycles. What what I mean when I what what I mean when I say a reference cycle, a reference cycle is when an object references itself. So in this code snippet here, we have a class student object. Uh, it's inheriting the object uh, object class, and it, it really does nothing because it has passed it. So we are instantiating st1, uh, uh, an an object of the student class, and we are saying st1 the object is equal to st1. So this object has a, a reference in it that points to itself. Now when you when you when you see when you write del st1 this is going to delete st1 like it's going to delete this reference but remember this object in memory has um it has a reference to itself so if you delete the object rather if you delete the reference if you delete the reference the object inside the memory still has a reference to itself and you can't now access it anymore because it first of all it was deleted you can't access it anymore in the program so the reference counter cannot remove such an object from from the from the execution heap it can't do that why because the reference count will go to zero I understand. so it will never go down to zero now there is a another algorithm that we had talked about earlier on which is the generational garbage collector now the generational garbage collector um uh, works by uh, it works by removing objects that have stayed in the heap for too long. For it, it does not care about the reference count. It just cares for, about how old an object is, um, and also and the number of references that are that are on there. Right. So, so let's come to the next slide. So there are certain things you need to know about um, the generational garbage collector. The generational garbage collector has two terminologies. There's a generation and there's a threshold. Now I have this illustration here. Um, on the Python heap, there are three generations, right? In a C Python heap, there are three generations, right? Three generations, each having a threshold. Now, a threshold is the maximum number of objects that can exist in that generation. The first generation contains the youngest, um, the youngest um, objects, really, the objects that have just been created. So if you create an, a variable and you give it a value, that value is an object that's going to be created in the memory. And therefore, it's going to be put in the first generation because it has just been created, and therefore, it's young. So the first generation has a threshold of 700. Now, what happens is that when the, when the threshold goes to 700, that triggers uh, a sweep of the GC. When I say sweep, that is a like the garbage collector is going to go through the entire heap and collect objects, right? It's going to collect garbage, right? Um, then the second generation has the threshold of 10, and the third has a generation of 10. So whenever an object survives a sweep in a lower generation, it is promoted to the next generation. If you survive a collection inside here, you're promoted to the next uh, generation. Uh, but usually what happens is that uh, objects, um, by the time they make it here, they are so old, and therefore at a certain point in time, they are going to be collected. So as you can see down here, there is an, ink, there is, um, there is, uh, an arrow showing increasing age. So uh, the, the, the higher the generation, I mean, the older the object. So basically that's the entire concept of the generational garbage collector. Um, now I need you to know that the action or the uh, activities or um, 
the um, behavior of the reference counting cannot be affected. Uh, like you, you, as a programmer, you don't have control over the you don't have control over the the reference counting garbage collector in C Python. But you can do something about the generation of garbage collector. To do something about the generation of garbage collector, you will import the GC module. When you import the GC module, you will um, there are certain there are a couple of methods that you can interact with to be able to manipulate its working, right? So we have the GC module here. Um, let me just go back into to the terminal to exit out of this repo. Clear it and uh, enter back into that. So I'm going to import GC. Now I'm going to say GC dot get threshold. Remember, I told you about what a threshold is. Now this prints seven hundred ten ten. Now this is the default one that you will get when you install CPython. But you can change it by using the GC dot set threshold um, threshold uh, method, right? So you provide the number of objects that has, that can be in the in the in the nursery. And the, sorry, not nursery. In the first generation, I'm going to put four hundred. The next one, I'm going to put twenty. Or second generation. And then 20. So I enter them, and next time around, when I say get threshold, I think you can see it has changed to what uh, I had said. So basically, these are ways in which you can try to tinker around with the GC to, to, to trigger it to um, to to make a collection, you know, uh, a sweep through the heap um, uh, whenever the objects in, in the first generation reach a certain number. Uh, but basically, that's it. So you this 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 means that. When the number of objects in the first generation reaches 400, the GC is going to do a sweep through the uh, through the 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 Python heap, right? And then and then also we have methods like GC dot get count. Now GC dot get count is going to show you how many objects are there in the first generation, how many are in the second, how many in the third. I think you can see. So when I run GC dot collect, GC dot collect is literally telling the, the GC to please collect some garbage. Yeah, so it has collected 28 items. Uh, get count. I think you see they have changed. Um, it has changed, right? Now, let's go back to our slide and proceed. Another best practices for the GC in Python, like what exactly should you, you know, do with um, the GC in Python? You probably don't really need to touch it. Uh, chances are you may not really need to change the GC behavior in Python. It's because really most of the things are, um, are, are, are tied up so nicely that it really works out of the box. There are rare occasions um, for applications that uh, are long running servers where you may need to, where the, the garbage collector may you know affect the execution of the machine. But by and large, for the most part, it's not really, um, it's not really, um, it's not really important, you know. Okay, it's 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 it is important to be able to change, and that's why there are all these interfaces and you know APIs for us to interact with the garbage collector. But by and large, if you're just writing a simple program, you may not really need to you know interact with the garbage collector. Probably you should, if you find yourself wanting to do something about the garbage collector, you should first think about what you're doing wrong uh, rather than wanting to change the garbage collector. Um, yeah, there was a case at, at there was a case rather there, there was um, an instance at Instagram Instagram tweet. Uh, not tweeted they they released a blog post about uh, about their garbage collector uh, disturbing them and how they turned it off and you know they did a lot of things with the garbage collector it's a whole blog article and it would really be nice if you go and look it up on the internet yeah so basically that's it so let's go down to PyPy. now PyPy is um is an alternative implementation of the python programming language uh, to see python uh, PyPy often runs faster than CPython because PyPy uses a just-in-time compiler um, or a JIT compiler. Um, so to check um, the PyPy implementation, so PyPy's interpreter is called PyPy at the command line. Uh, it's called PyPy at the command line. And uh, we can just uh, test it out here. So I'm going to exit out of the CPython command line, uh, rather repo, and I will enter into the PyPy. So I have PyPy installed on my computer. Uh, this is a Mac I used to install it but you should be able to install it on, on linux as well um, most distributions should be able to run pipi so i'm in the pipi um i read about print loop 
Uh, as you can see, it's based on Python 3. So I'm going to uh, import platform. So after importing platform, I'm going to print, uh, sorry, I'm going to print, print platform dot Python implementation. Um, so this is going to print PyPy because it's, uh, in, I mean, Python implementation, Python, right? Now, um, let's go into the garbage collection algorithms. Now, PyPy has uh, garbage collection algorithms. Uh, Pi -Pi, Pi -Pi, the PyPy GC is uh, chosen at the point of building the executable from source uh, using the, the dash dash GC name option. Now, PyPy, PyPy's interpreter is built using uh, our Python. Our Python is a tool chain that is used for building interpreters, um, building interpreters for dynamically typed languages. Now, uh, our Python has a GC framework and it has, as you can see, a litany of garbage collection algorithms. And um, there's, there's so many, they all work differently, but the end goal is really to remove garbage from the heap, right? Now, if you see this line of code, uh, the, the, the one this this particular line, it's not really a line of code. It's a command that you put at the at the terminal um, that builds PyPy using the R Python using R Python um, and uh, makes sure that the JIT compiler is there and chooses the the GC the garbage collector that is going to be in that interpreter as max sweep. Now max sweep is max and sweep. It's this one down here. Um, by default, if you don't specify the garbage collector that PyPy is going to use, you will it will be built with ink minimac, which is the default garbage collector. And we are going to see how ink minimac works, right? Uh, it's, it's the one we are going to see because I mean this one just so many, but I'm going to share links to when where you can access how all these garbage collectors work. Uh, they are documented in the R Python GC framework. Now. Increment mark is uh, PyPy's default garbage collector, and it's an incremental generation of moving collector. What does that mean? It's very similar to C Python's generational garbage collector. The difference is that this one has, uh, and its first generation in this case is called a nursery, and I think it makes sense because a nursery is for young, young things, right? Um, yeah. So um, it has a nursery for young objects, and then another, um, um, another. Um, should I call it a compartment? Uh, it, they're either arenas or memory allocations. Now, those arenas, uh, arenas are like um, they're like should I, I could call them generations within the, the heap. Okay, not generations as such. They're like um, spaces within the heap that have been allocated for objects of a particular type or objects of a particular size, right? So an arena uh, that could be like four arenas. So one arena could be for objects that are maybe four kb in size and writing size so they are they could be classified in certain um classified in with certain aspects then for memory allocations uh, if an object is so huge in size it's going to be put somewhere in memory right so those um those uh, the memory allocations are really done for objects that are huge in memory now the size of the nursery influences how in minima like minima gc works or minima gc it influences because whenever the nursery gets full, um, it uh, garbage collection is done. Whenever the nursery gets full, garbage collection is done, and you can influence the the size of the nursery using the PyPy GC nursery environment variable. So where the Python, um, the PyPy interpreter is executing the environment in which the PyPy interpreter is executing. Um, you can set the environment variable PyPy GC nursery either to to any amount you want, really, it depends on how much RAM you have. Uh, you can it's it, it, it's in bytes, so it can be MBs or bytes or I don't know, really any of the unit that unit the unit is bytes, so you can specify the size of of, of um, the nursery that you want. Um, the collection for the older generation is done incrementally, and this allows the applications not to have very long post times as the GC is making a collection. Now, I, I didn't mention earlier on, but the way these garbage collectors work, they work on a stop the world uh, something philosophy. So when the garbage collector is going to work, the mutator or the application code, right, stops and the garbage collector goes through the entire heap of the software of the process and collects garbage. So it, it, it's something like it 
tells the mediator, please hold on, I need to collect some garbage. So it goes onto the heap, collects all the garbage, and then um, it, when it's done, the mediator can start working. Now, this, this particular behavior of stop the world causes certain problems with the Python, um, causes some problems with, with especially applications that are low latency. It's an application that is low latency will suffer spikes, like a spike is like a wait. So the mediator will wait for some time. So the time it will wait to wait for a long time as the GC is, um, is working. So it's waiting. And that's very bad for low lat latency applications. Um, uh, one of the reasons that's why PyPy has this, um, this uh, generational incremental moving collector. Uh, it does not pause for a very long time. Like, I, like it's written here, the collection for the older generations is done incrementally. And this allows the applications not to have very long pause times as the GC is making a collection. So it goes incrementally collecting, collecting objects that, uh, that, are, that are garbage on the heap um rather than pausing everything and collecting everything remember the arenas even have um have a certain um uh, have certain the arenas have rather the memory allocations have certain uh objects that are so huge so having the garbage collector go through this entire heap collecting if it happens all at once this is going to affect the it's going to affect the, the running of the application especially if it's a low latency application um so um let's go to the next so to how to interact with the piper gc ink minimap uh ink minimap gc is configurable through a set of environment variables um like i, I mentioned earlier on there's a piper gc nursery and the piper gc nursery debug now the piper gc nursery debug is an environment variable that you will set and this is really used for just debugging how the GC is working. If, if set to none, to none zero, it will fill the nursery with garbage to help in debugging. The Piper GC nursery uh, environment variable sets the size of the nursery beyond which collection happens. So um, you don't have to set the size as a programmer if you really want to, um, um, if you really want to uh, uh, do some experimentation with the um, Piper. Uh, just in a sorry size you can set it and um if when when it gets full so if you want uh garbage collection sweeps to happen more often i think going for a smaller just in a sorry size is what you will go for because in, in this case it's going to fill up faster and uh, then there are going to be more garbage collection sweeps than on, on the heap if you want it to happen more infrequently then you need to increase the size from the default uh, there's a link that is provided here. I'll share the slides later on and you can go and look into all the environment variables that you can set for ink minimark uh, for the pipe by default GC. Um, so there is also semi manual GC management for the ink minimark. This still this is in Python. Um, you can even see Python, you can do this. You can disable the GC, you can enable it, and you can do collection. So this just, just the same as what happens in. C Python, you can also do it inside a PyPy uh, for its for its garbage collector. Yeah, so that's that was Ink Minimark. I hope it made some sense. Um, so now the best practices in PyPy. Uh, the necessary size is very is a very crucial variable. Uh, depending on your workload, uh, one of many processes and cache sizes, you might want to experiment with it via the PyPy GC necessary environment variable. So uh, depending on really what application you're building, it really does it. it I think requirements vary so much. Some people may prioritize performance over memory consumption. Others may prioritize memory consumption over performance, but it's really up to the programmer. You can use the, that environment variable to set the necessary size and therefore influence how often um, the, the garbage collector does collections. Now in low latency applications like games, because um, game, a game is a very real time application, the user is supposed to have instantaneous feedback you might want to control precisely when the GC runs. So you do so by disabling the GC at a certain point in your program, um, using the GC.disable function, and then collecting at a certain point in time. So you may want at a certain point, you don't want the GC to be interrupted. Now, when you disable the garbage collector, um, the size of objects, rather the number of objects in the heap is going to grow indefinitely. There is no one watching out for them. Even those that have references that are dead now, they're going to stay there because the garbage collector has been disabled. Um, and then maybe in the future, you can decide to call GC the collect to collect the garbage uh, on the heap. 
So that was it for PyPy. The other implementation uh, of Python is Ion Python. Ion Python um, has a cool name, really. <laughs> Ion Python is an open source implementation of the Python programming language, which is tightly integrated with .NET. So it's basically built with .NET, right? And it uses the same GC algorithm as CPython, the reference counting and the generation of GC with, with a few changes, really. But it's, it basically just implemented CPython, but in .NET. The benefit is that um, uh, the benefit is that uh, developers can easily interact with .NET, uh, the .NET runtime in Python, as well as the dot, uh, as well as Python in .NET. So it's um, basically that's what it is. So if you understood reference counting, you know objects in memory uh, when the reference that goes to zero, the garbage collector collects them, and the generation of GCs. So we have a nursery. We have a, rather not a nursery. We have a first generation, a second generation, and a third generation. Um, when an object survives the first generation, uh, it's going to be promoted to the next generation, like that. And when 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 this one survives, and this generation is going to be promoted, but eventually at a certain point in time, it's going to be collected, right? Yeah. So that's that's Iron Python for you. Um, and then we have uh, Jython. Jython uh, is a project that, that provides implementations of Python in Java. So this is really Python that is built on the JVM. It's providing the Python. Providing to Python the benefits of running on the Java virtual machine and access to classes written in Java. So now Jython, as, as a language itself, does not do garbage collection in, the, it's, in its interpreter. The garbage collection happens in the JVM. So it's actually the JVM that manages um, garbage collection. That's clearly out of the scope of this talk. Um, Java has its own, you know, the JVM has its own um garbage collection algorithms running down there and it uh it's what jython uses um when objects really um when when when, when objects need to be collected when there is garbage when the heap has increased uh so the um, the jvm will be the one that does the collection of objects that are dead on the heap and thereby maintaining the amount of memory or keeping in check the amount of memory that the interpreter is consuming uh, that's Jason for you. You can go look into it. Yeah. Um, so I have additional material for further study if you really want to get into garbage collection, um, certain links to the R Python's um, garbage collection documentation. Um, also, um, you know the how to manipulate the um, the GC of PyPy more uh, more in the environment variables all links are provided here as well as in c python these links are the first one is for c python next one is for pypy and the third one is for r python uh, you can go read more about about the garbage collection the strategies and uh, you know everything that that happens under the hood um so that's really it for me uh, i hope it was uh fruitful for you um i don't know if there are any questions I think we are running out of time.